Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free car. Hey, whatever you can afford. What's going on, YouTube? It's Wally Knox Hill, and we are back. We are back with our reaction series. So today, today, man, Christmas has come early. It is that time of year. There is a party going on in my pants right now. I am so excited for epic rap battles of history. It has been too long, man. So right here, right now, we got Henry Ford versus Karl Marx. Let's do it. Let's go. Workers, free the glass slaves, lose your chain, trade them in for mass graves. I would stop it. Wow, appalling mounds of body bag. When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag. I produce with my two hands, you're a destitute trade. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any person tries to seize my private property will catch a tall friends to his private pot properly. Who takes advice from a broke flop? It's laughable. I wouldn't wipe my tailpipe with your dice crapital. Save the penny for his daughter you named Jenny. You might not have needed to bury quite so many. Who's that crowd in the galley? Oh, <laughs> ERB is back, and there were so many shots fired by Henry Ford, aka Nice Peter, to start this. Now, I wanted to do something different, and we're gonna just like let versus play, enjoy them, let them flow, and then we're gonna go back and break it down because there is there's a lot already that's happened. So, all right, let's go, man, let's go. My lines are a production. I just love the way it kind of holds that out. It's like a conversational tone with the flow. But obviously, Henry Ford, father of the production line that gave us the Model T, right? Motor City is in Detroit, which is synonymous with Ford and him and the industry that he built. Versus playing off of the red, red for communism, even though Karl Marx was not a part of the Soviet Union. Obviously, the Soviet Union took a lot of their ideas in Stalin and Lenin of communism from Marx's writing. So we're playing off of the red of like communism and the Soviet Union dropping in real quick. And then the production lines versus lines are made of bread, right? Because in the Soviet Union, you had a lot of people starving. Many died from hunger. You had bread lines happening. So he's talking about his rap lines and the production to his raps here on the RB versus the production lines that he's doing in the factory and then flipping that into a diss on lines of bread. Don't come with that weak shit around here, Karl Marx. Is how I got my start mm. now. Watch me tear your ideology apart. You Dissembling timepieces, right? Because when he was like 12 or 13, like he took a watch, he broke it apart, the timepiece, he put it back together, and that started to ignite his curiosity into production and how things come together and how they're made. Now watch. See the clever wordplay right there? Like watch, pay attention versus disabling timepieces, timepiece, aka a watch, smooth little double that Peter slipped in there. Disabling timepieces is how I got my start now. Watch me tear your ideology apart. You scream, unite the workers, free the class slaves. Lose your chain, trade them in for mass graves. I would stop. Workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your change. A favorite Mark's speech right there. So playing off of that, like, free yourselves, lose your chains, right? Rebel against the bourgeois. Free labor for all and destroy and take back the means of production. Obviously, a lot of these ideologies, which led and stemmed to the rise of communism. Unite the workers, free the glass slaves. Lose your chains, trade them in for mass graves. Mm. I would stop it. Wow, Trade him in for mass graves, which sets up the following line of Mao and Stalin. Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin, very ruthless dictators who applied Marxism, but then it got diluted by human selfishness, greed, corruption, violence, control. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Free the glass slaves. Lose your chain, trade him in for mass graves. Mao and Stalin, wow, appalling mounds of body bags. When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag. I produce with my two and that is the best bar of the verse right there. When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag. Like, you know, that's danger being signaled as in a red flag that's used in conversation for idioms today versus literally a red flag. Because if you look at Mao Zedong in China, that's a red flag. If you look at the Soviet Union, the Russia and Stalin, that's a red flag as well. Hello, the body count keeps rising up. No, I'm not talking about dating in red flags. When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag. I 
produce with my two hands. You're a destitute trans. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any That's a dope line too. Like, you know the saying like, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. The American dream, you know? Grind, put in that perseverance, work, and you can work your way up. So taking your... Taking control of your own destiny, manifest destiny in that sense, versus like being so poor, which Karl Marx was very poor. He spent most of his life in poverty. So he's literally waiting in line for bread lines and he's also trading his bootstraps for food stamps because he can't afford anything else. Hands, you're a destitute trans, scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any person tries to seize my private property will catch a torque wrench to his private pot properly. Who takes it by? Torque wrench, which is used in the lines of production versus private property. Right, because Ford was a very successful man of the bourgeois, right? He was an enemy, essentially, to Marx. I see why this battle is setting up in this way. You have someone who is like at the forefront of capitalism and the means of production and someone who wants to tear down those walls and recreate the system within Karl Marx. So Ford being American, hey, don't don't come around my private property. All right, you're going you're gonna to find out what happens over this way, boy. To drop them drawers. All right, I'm done. And then obviously Karl Marx was a Prussian, and then he wasn't a Prussian because Prussia was like, nah, we don't want you. And I think like Belgium kicked him out, and like UK wouldn't give him citizenship. So yeah, he, he got around. He hoard around countries. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any Prussian tried to seize my private property, he would catch a tall grass to his private pot property. Who takes And for Marx, I mean, it, it's kind of debatable what Marx means by property specifically is it bourgeois property right because that is what alienates the workers from the production and the capital and the control of all that so to marx he wanted to abolish that sentiment of private property does it extend to something like this hat that i own as private property and and the shirt that i wear and things like that no marx really wanted to uh redistribute in terms of how wealth was shared especially within a capitalist society when you have such surpluses that happen at factories and things instead of it all going to the factory owners and to the bourgeois you know he wanted to redistribute that wealth i mean listen in terms of ideology right this is always the critique of communism that a lot of people understand communism is not what stalin gave us what lenin and mao zedong gave us no communism is what Karl Marx was trying to give us in debating through his ideas, but we've never seen a real life application of communism because it's always been corrupted by very corrupt human beings. And that is the argument is that you have to create a system that takes into account human fallacies and you know the darker side of human beings and can protect against that, which obviously this system failed to do. With my two hands, you're a destitute trans. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any person tried to seize my private property would catch a tall grass to his private pot properly. Yeah. Who takes advice from a broke slime? It's laughable. I wouldn't wipe my tailpipe with your DOS crap. I don't know if you'd save the penny for each. DOS crap, it'll right? crap, tailpipe. Poop bars, toilet paper, using his book, Das Capital, to wipe his ass with, but it's not even worthy of that. Broke fly. It's laughable. I wouldn't wipe my tailpipe with your Das Capital. If you'd save the penny for his daughter you named Jenny, you might not have needed to bury quite some in. Who's that crowd, you that is probably the most vicious of them all right there. I mean, listen, we talk about this in battles. Like, the best bars are the ones that you know are going to get under your opponent's skin. And that right there is a very personal family bar. Because he lost, he had like seven kids. He lost like three or four of them, right? And he, four of them were named like Jenny. So if you would have saved more money and weren't so poor and could have afforded a doctor and afforded better conditions to look after your children, maybe you wouldn't have lost so much. I mean, that definitely hits kind of different. Takes it? advice from a broke fly. It's laughable. I wouldn't wipe my Ford is vicious. And notice how you have the production line happening behind him. I think that's funny. Your dad's crap at all. If you'd save the penny for his daughter, you named Jenny, you might not have needed to bury quite some in. Who's that crowd? You're not carrying it. You're drinking card carrying. You just think it's legal. GWF Heigl, right? One of the famous German philosophers that influenced Marx. And he talks about him and shouts him out. So that's why he's saying the proud Hegelian here. And then Lincoln let... Oh, I'm breaking it down and we didn't even listen to the verse. All right, come on. Let's listen to the verse and then we'll come back. I'm, I'm getting used to this new format. Let's go. Very quite some in. Who's that proud young Hegelian? If you drink a card carry him. You just think it's legal and it ain't a proletarian. It's Karl Marx. A very right stop. I'm dropping you like Hitler dropped your name in Mein Kampf. My codes of didn't cause mass grief. Get that from books, but you didn't read shit. Self-made man stories dumb from a tourist. Your daddy's the ants gave you a free fall. Of course, you were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother. Maybe that's why you spied at your workers like Big Brother. Your model, T, total lack of style is killing me. 
You can take shit on you according to ability Do what your first car can't take back up Beating knees like your city in Brazil Nuts! Woo. Don't step that close without some- <laughs> Oh ho oh, oh, Marx is coming back, baby! Ooh, I think I really like this one. All right, let's go. Let's bring it back. Now we can break it down. I'm allowed to now. He was a heavy drinker. Lincoln letter, right? Because he wrote letters to Lincoln, obviously supporting Lincoln during the Civil War because he saw the slaves as representing the bourgeois and the old system trying to overthrow that. So Karl Marx threw his hat in the ring behind Lincoln. Does the Hitler mustache right there? I just noticed that. But then Hitler's book Mein Kampf. Yes, Hitler did shout out Henry Ford. Said he was a great man. If that's not setting red flags up, I don't know what is. Notice how the red flags, because what did Ford do? Well, I'm going to critique you for Mao Zedong. I'm going to critique you for these horrible human beings that are affiliated with you. Okay. I see that card. I'm going to reverse Uno it right here. How you doing? One of the worst people in all of history, Adolf Hitler, shouted you out. That is not a cosign that you want on your table. I'm dropping you like Hitler dropped your name in Mein Kampf. My codes didn't cause mass grief. We did get that from books, but you didn't read shit. Self-made man stories dung from a Taurus. Your daddy's to landscape. Self-made man stories dung from a Taurus. Basically, that that's just a clever way of saying it's shit. It is dung from a Taurus, which is the sign, astrological sign of a, or in astronomy, a bull. A Taurus, bull, bull, shit, bull, dung, Taurus, dung, versus the Ford Taurus. And yes, Henry Ford did not like to read. He was a very hands-on type of dude. You like Hitler, drop your name and mind cough. My codes of didn't cause mass grief. We did you get that from books, but you didn't read shit. Your self-made man studies dumb from a Taurus. Your daddy's to ants gave you a free fall of a Taurus. You were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother. Maybe that's... See, remember how we talk about just those lines that get underneath a people's skin? Well, listen, if you're going to talk about my family, touche. I'm going to talk about your family, too. Because, yes, his mom died in child labor with the seventh kid and then flipping it on. You know, you, you want to talk about being such a self-made man. Well, guess what? You were gifted land in the first place. You were gifted a farm. You already started ahead in life where most people didn't. You were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother. Maybe that's why you smile at your workers like Big Brother. Your mother. Big Brother, 1984, George Orwell shout out right there. And yes, it is kind of scary, but this is what Ford did. If you entered a contract with Ford and, hey, you wanted to get that $5 a day, people, then you had to accept the Ford Sociological Commission, right? And basically, like, they knew everything about your life. They would just unannounced house visits they would come visit you they would come check on your wife hell they even taught cooking classes to your wife to get her to cook to make sure that the kids were in school they made sure that you weren't drinking too much so you weren't gambling so it was very big brother s in terms of controlling your life that was henry ford right there ladies and gentlemen just going a step too far as that would not be accepted nowadays obviously so he's playing off like big brother 1984 the government always watching you henry ford is always watching from the tours, your daddy's to ants gave you a free fall of course you were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother maybe that's why you smile at your workers like big brother and then the most clever wordplay flip of that is he's the first of all these kids making him the big brother to the rest of the kids in the family right so he is the big brother versus acting like big brother to his employees oh that was smooth and fun fact about uh you know while we're pooping on ford and yeah his awful ways of treating employees one positive that i will give him is like there were a lot of immigrants that were hired and they taught english classes and what's interesting is that during that time you know when you wanted to apply for naturalization and citizenship one of the uh, credentials you could get accepted for was if you pass Ford's English classes, like they, they did do some good as well. So if you pass those English classes, they became like the gold standard for learning English within the United States. And they started to be accepted for citizenship criteria. You self-made man studies dumb from a tourist. Your daddy's to ants gave you a free fall of course. You were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother. Maybe that's why you smile at your workers like Big Brother. Your model T, total lack of style is killing me. They can take shit on you according to ability. Do what your first card from each according to his ability, to each according to their needs. That's right. So basically saying, you know, again, in terms of the distribution of wealth, right? You know, everyone 
pays into the system in terms of contributing what they're able to contribute. And then they only take what they truly need, trying to eliminate greed, trying to eliminate this imbalance and unfairness within society. At the end of the day, Mark saw a system where the rich continue to get richer and the poor get poorer. And what he tried to do was, how can I solve this system? How can I try to create a better society? Because he saw so many workers within just these industrial plants, within these awful working conditions, just get completely alienated. Alienated from the goods they were making, alienated from being invested in that, just alienated in terms of their psychology, their mental health, their well-being, and everything. And he wanted to try to fix that system. And then Ford was always critiqued for the Model T because it was it was basic bitch. It was basic bougie bitch shit, all right? But hey, it was economical and it made him a lot of money. Oh, like your first car can't and back up because Ford's first invention was the quadricycle and the quadricycle could not back up. It couldn't go in reverse, right? That gave rise, obviously, to the Model T later on into better models. But yeah, Ford built that. And shout out to him for that genius of inventing that. So back up on this track. Give me some space. And then in Brazil, nuts. Brazil nuts this time of year. They are delicious. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, bitches. Do according to ability. Do what your first car can and back up. Fitting is like your city in Brazil. Oh, he's he's backing. You see him? You see, you see Marks right there? Like, backing that ass up? I like that. Got some bump in the trunk, baby. Do ability. Do what your first car can and back up. Fitting is like your city in Brazil. Not Fordlandia was a city in Brazil. And because like rubber was huge in Brazil at the time, rubber, tires, right? So Ford had the great idea, hey, I'm gonna sink millions into building this town out in the middle of the Amazonian jungle. Yeah, and we're gonna source rubber from there and I'm gonna, you know, control the flow of raw materials and, you know, lessen my cost. And he thought it was gonna be this great place. And it is funny because Mark's trying to build his utopia. Well, Ford tried to build his utopia, and that fell through. They fucking rebelled. Like, there was an uprising. The, the fucking Brazil police tried to put them down. Yeah, that, that just ended in hell. It's not because well. what your first car catch and back up. Fitting is like your city in Brazil. Nuts! Don't step that close without some beer jam poo, son. You lived in Cologne. Look like you could have used some. I drip with style like... Okay, all right, that's punny right there. Cologne, you some like spray some cologne on versus Cologne, Germany. That's a beer jam poo, son. You lived in Cologne. Look like you could have used some. I drip with style like a dipstick drips oil. You look as sick as your chronic dick boy. I'm mass producing abuse on a utopian hobo. I'm throwing you for loops like the F of my logo. Like Ooh. these men work, you brought nothing but harm. Take your boots while pig shit back to animal farm. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got some more lines here. Let's break it down, man. You're a dipstick versus dipstick into the oil to measure the oil level. Yeah, yeah. He had boils around his penis. That probably was not comfortable. You think about the Ford F, right? It's inside of a loop, the Ford lettering but also there's there's a lot of loops to the ford insignia right so he's throwing you for loops on this track versus literal loops and then calling him a utopian we talked about this utopian vision that marx had that just never hit the realism of today's world and just human greed and just human corruption but also he lived very poor so he's calling him a hobo too makes sense abuse on a utopian hobo i'm throwing you for loops like the f of my logo like eight man work you brought nothing but harm we had an early sexy chicken. Let's keep it going. Oh, I'm throwing you for loops like the F of my logo. Like eight man work, you brought nothing but harm. Take your bourgeois pig shit back to animal farm. Yes. Your factory could. Your bourgeois, right? Take your bourgeois pig shit back to animal farm. Another Orwellian reference right there. Animal farm. Shout out to Napoleon, man. So basically, animal farm was based off of Stalin, his uprising, right? Because the animals started an uprising and rebelled against the humans. 
they weren't happy, so they took over, much in the same way that the communist revolution happened in Russia. And lo and behold, as time goes on, the animals become corrupted themselves. And then the book ends where basically there's like no difference between the animals and the humans. Like they're sat drinking and gambling together, and they've been so corrupted by power and corrupted by this utopian system that they tried to create. So I love how he's playing off of all of this and flipping it back onto Mars. Work, you brought nothing but harm. Take your boots while pigs sit back to hell. And then pig shit. Like, you're full of shit. Pig shit versus the pigs in Animal Farm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your factory conditions were bleak. Crap and machines. Cranking out four severed fingers a week. You're controlled with employees. Good things drink and eat. And when they march for better wages, shut them dead in the street. In truth, but you produce for alienated working men. Who would clock into Detroit and lose themselves like m and And now your great legs stay. It's exactly the <laughs> <a great time. laughs> I didn't want to pause for that. Come on, the Eminem reference. We'll get back to that. Wow, talk about leading, letting people astray. No, no, too early for puns. All right, let's get back to this. There is some. This might be my favorite verse so far. Your factory conditions were bleak, crap of machines, cranking out four severed fingers a week. Like that little piano introducer. It just sounds kind of. I don't know. I feel like horror is about to happen, like Ghost is gonna jump up behind me. You're controlled with employees, good things, drink and eat. And when they march for better wages, shut them dead in the street. And the Ford hunger strikes, right? They march to the factory in Dearborn, Michigan. And this is this was horrible for the time. And this is something that just didn't get the right amount of press and attention. Because you have the Great Depression and everything that happened in the Depression. So these employees wanted to protest. And the mayor allowed it to go through, but he didn't give them the waiver or the paperwork. Anyways, so like they marched most of the way. But, with, but then once I got to Dearborn, like the police at Dearborn and then like Ford's private security. Yeah, he had private security too, by the way. Like this man like literally created like his own government and world for controlling people. He was very big brother-esque. But obviously protests are happening. They try to stop them. And then the police just start opening fire. And there's like this one officer who's a real piece of shit, like rolls down his window and like drives past and just starts like shooting into the fucking crowd. And then you have like the police like shooting fucking machine guns into the crowd and like standing on a bridge shooting down at them. So people were killed and so many were injured as well. And then the press the next day, and this is Ford's control. They're like, they're all tilting it against the protesters. Like it was a communist uprising, right? And see the communists tie in with Marx again. And obviously communism at this time didn't have the uh, the best of connotations and it's starting to turn. So we're playing off of that. So it was like a communist led uprising and they deserved it. And basically everything was just totally biased and written in favor of the police. Then some of the news reporting agencies actually did their job and started to investigate and realize, wait, holy shit, like none of these people were actually armed and they were just like fired upon at will, which is just crazy. So then they started to critique it, but it still never got the proper level of national attention. And yeah, it was a violent way to stop peaceful protests and people who just wanted to better their lives. But as a grand result of this, eventually you led to unions, you led to a union agreement with Ford much later on. But yeah, that is a very dark, twisted past. I like how Marx brought that up. controlled with employees, good things, drink and eat. And when they march for better wages, shut them dead in the street. In truth, what you produce for alienated working men who would clock into Detroit and lose themselves like m and Obviously playing off of lose yourself in the music the moment you want it. You better never let it go. Shout out to Eminem from Detroit. Ford tying in with Detroit. One of my favorite bars right now. Love the hip hop homage and reference right there. And we just lost our recording software. We're getting there. You know, sometimes I don't know whether to make love to that chicken or eat it. Yeah, a dilemma we'll always have. Sounds like m and and now your great leg stays. It's exactly a great sight. You were worse for Michigan than Flint's water pipes. Uh, you great. Obviously, the lead from Flint, Michigan's pipes made the water undrinkable. A lot of people suffered from lead poisoning. You were worse for Michigan than one of the greatest catastrophes of the public services sector within Michigan. I don't know why I'm speaking like this, but there are some good lines here. It's exactly a great sight. You were worse for Michigan than Flint's water pipes. Uh, you grab the bottom press and don't leave me impressed. You're not hot, Carl. That's your shit on your chest. But for a man to stay less, you got an awful lot to say. I pay you five dollars a day to go away. And Buddy Angle's bank rolls with the textile bill. I guess the capitalists are cool when they're paying your bills. Ooh. You're a hypocrite. Nick with his love was up to this issue. Step off your soapbox. Take the soap with you. Look, dummy. 
Oh man, there's some good rebuttals there from Ford. And I like how like you just get like this little guitar and bam, 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 bam. As soon as we like get in the car, it just adds like a different pacing to it. Really dope production on this one right here. All right, let's jump into it. Grab the bottom press and only me impressed. Oh, we didn't talk about Michigan being the Great Lakes sake, obviously touching four of the five Great Lakes. You're not hot, Carl. That's your shit on your chest. Bubba, man. You're not hot, Carl. Hot, Carl. You know, some people are into that. Take a poop on me. That's going to sexually stimulate me. Most people just get the doggy bag and clean it up. You grab the bottom press and only me impressed. But you're not hot, Carl. Like, you're not spitting hot bars. You're not bringing that hot shit around here. Also, you're not taking poops on people and having sex with them. How you feel about that? Not hot, Carl. That's your shit on your chest. But remain to state less. You got an awful lot to say. I pay you five. State less. We talked about that. Dollars a day to go away, buddy. And then Ford paying people five dollars a day, which was a lot of money at that time. Angles bank rolls with the textile bill. I guess the capitalists are cool when they're paying your bills. You're a hit. Friedrich Engels, he was one of the, you know, owners of production and capital that Marx ironically wanted to overturn. And he funded a lot of what Marx did, but he believed in Marx's values and his ideals. So I love how Ford is pointing out this relationship, which, hey, when it benefits you, it's okay. You'll accept it. But isn't that a little bit hypocritical? Hmm. How the world has turned around on its head. Gangles bank rolls with the textile bill. I guess the capitalists are cool when they're paying your bills. You're a hypocrite. Nick with his love was up to this issue. Step off your soapbox. Take the soap with you. You know when someone's on a soapbox, they're a soapbox preacher trying to change the world and do all that. But again, there's a lot of Ford going, you smelled very stinky. It's time for you to take a bath, you poor hobo slob. Hypocrite. Nick with his love was up to this issue. Step off your soapbox. Take the soap with you. Dummy, shedding money is the communist vision. Engels Bank was the crank that got the revolution spinning. We gave everything to- Nice rebuttal, and I like the little choir effect here. Oh, oh, oh take us to church. Shedding money is the communist vision. Engels Bank was the crank that got the revolution spinning. We gave everything to see the common people like that. I'm so down for the cause, I even pawned my own ass. You grew so out of touch, you sabotaged your only kid. It's a stomach cancer should more love than you did. So congrats, your legacy that ashes. Remembered as the fascist sympathizing cause of climate change, your car crashes. From your newspaper to your dozy factory, cross the pawns. Frankly, Hank, it's clear, ask which side you are on. like that hammer. Oh, I think that was the KO with the last verse. Ooh, that was nasty. Touch it, Sabbath, touch it. Oh, come on. Come but on. Like I'm so down for the cause. I even pawned my own pants. He did. He did. His wife, like, sold his pants because, he, again, they were so poor, man. This man lived in poverty for so long. Ooh, so out of touch it, Sabbath, touch it, only kid. It's a stomach cancer should move. Etzel Ford. Right, Etzel Ford was completely sabotaged, and there's there there even became like a saying that grew out of it. Like when a company is so out of touch with what the consumer wants, they pulled like an Etzel Ford, and like even Ford tried to release the like Etzel Ford model later on, and it just like totally flatlined. Like they were trying to pay homage to him, and it was just like just blew up in their face. But basically, Henry like stepped back. Here you go, son. Here's the keys to the city. But really, behind the scenes, it was all just puppeteering right he just wanted him out front so then he could you know convince a lot of the shareholders just to pass him back shares so he could take more control and just like rule from the shadows instead and not be in the public eye but he still controlled the company and he would like publicly go against his son and like embarrass him in front of his employees his son like developed you get it after this with like the stomach cancer thing and like the ulcers because his son was so fucking stressed out and i think here's the thing about henry ford right if you want to look at someone's character Right? I'm not talking about their fucking accomplishments because he's so celebrated. But let's look at his character. He was a piece of shit. Like, you start treating your son like that, and he sent his son to his deathbed with all the fucking stress that he put him through. Didn't let him actually run the company, but, like, the narrative is that, oh, well, Ford failed when his son was running the company. Well, how can it when he couldn't make his own decisions and do any of the changes that he wanted to do because his dad's sabotaging everything in the background, embarrassing him, firing departments that shouldn't be fired just to show him who has the real power. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a convoluted shit show. He really didn't take care of his kids. Remember that? The fascist sympathizing cause of climate change and car crashes. Fascist sympathize. I was wondering when we we're gonna get more to this. You had a little bit of the Hitler at the beginning. I feel like the only critique I have of Marx's verses is we should have brought this in a little bit earlier and just like really hit this point home. Like Ford's like, hey, you smell bad. Where Marx is like, yeah, uh, you help the Nazis. I mean, come on, if, if you really want to like just KO someone, throw it out there. And that's, again, something that has gotten more attention, I feel like, later on, now that, you know, Ford's legacy has well been cemented. But 
you know, during during Hitler's rise and then the Nazi regime wasn't I even read an article where Ford and like GM them, they were like bitching about turning the factories over here and converting them into weapons for the allies and, you know, vehicles for the allies. Whereas in Germany, yeah, they did it right away. And they were still supplying the Germans with Ford vehicles. They were helping the Nazis. Some of their production plants were converted to weapons plants. There was like forced slavery and labor going on. Hence why Hitler is over there like shouting out Ford in Mein Kampf, saying he's a great man because he invested so much in Germany. He helped the Nazis out a lot with things. Also, a thing that gets underappreciated is he was anti-Semitic too. Like he basically was putting out pamphlets of conspiracy theories that the Jews run the world, they're driving everything into the ground, like furthering Hitler's dialogue and his ideology and all of that. Think about how dangerous that was at the time. We're gonna get back to it with the Auschwitz bars here. Your legacy is an ashes. Remember as the fascist sympathizer goes of climate change, your car crashes. And then obviously the climate change, because of cars, all the CO2 and emissions going into the sky, car crashes are the highest in the United States than most other first world countries. It's crazy. Listen. I'm going to speak on this very quickly in terms of the roads. I drive in PG County, right? You come down 395, you guys know. I mean, if you can drive on 395, you can drive anywhere in the United States of America. It is a shit show around there in the Beltway. It's like four lanes, people fucking swerve in, no blinkers, nothing. I found in other countries like Germany or England, for instance, like they have a system of passing. So someone can't pass you in like the right lane, the left lane, all these other lanes. You got to be worried about just like chaos incarnate on the roads, like there is a specific passing lane, and then you're supposed to work your way over. So you always know you're not getting passed on one side. You're getting passed on a certain side. That is the passing lane, and that's it. And they're taught this at a young age, and they have an organized system of overtaking. Why can't we take some of those principles and apply it? Because we have so many damn car crashes in the United States. It's ridiculous. Ah! You grew so out of touch, you sabotaged your only kid. It's a stomach cancer showed more love than you did. So congrats. Your legacy is an ashes. Remember as the fascist sympathizing goes of climate change, your car crashes. From your newspaper to your dirty factory. There's a newspaper that he put out at Ford factories, like just sharing all this Jewish anti-Semitism propaganda. The board, likely, Hank, it's clear as, which side you are this as to which side you're on, Auschwitz, right? The concentration camp, that's a very clever wordplay and flip right there. And again, just tying in with him supporting the Nazi regime, supporting anti-Semitism at this time when Jews are literally being killed and the Holocaust is happening. Do we, do we not see maybe some issues here with Henry Ford? I like how this is all coming around, but... On the other side of it, Mark's waiting for the final verse to really land the killing blow to your newspaper to your dozy factory cross the board. Likely Hank it's clear as which side you are on. This battle's been a blow like that hemorrhage in your head. I'll leave a floor as expected. Found on road dead. <laughs> Found on road dead. Which spells out Ford. That's an acronym for it. And then he had a hemorrhage in her head, so he's blowing it out. He's winning this battle, and that's how Henry Ford died. And yeah, he just he killed him here. This battle's been a blow like that hemorrhage in your head. I'll leave a floor as expected. Son on road dead. Wow. I love this beat, man. It's got a little bit of like an old school hip hop vibe to it too. So is ERB back? What was that? Was that like just a little teaser at the very end? Like, hey, we got more coming. That was Godzilla right there. Is that a preview of what's next? I don't know. Is there more ERB? Because I have a boner right now. If if that's happening, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Wow, that was a fun battle, man. I really thought there were some really good bars and rebuttals from both sides. There was so much packed in this. This is what I love about ERB. Like they really do their homework and like all the references, all the wordplay, great rhyme schemes. There was some great alliteration going on too. A lot of plays on consonant sounds, just different things, just so much skill and talent into the delivery, into the personality of the bars, but also really having some heavy hitting blows. But I got to give this one to Carl Marks, even though ultimately I don't think he won at life. Henry Ford definitely uh, won that game in the end. But anyways, ERB, you are not so certified. Hope you guys liked today's video. Listen, if for some reason you're here at the end, obviously enjoy the content. Do me a huge favor, support channel directly. Subscribe notifications on. Really, really does go a long way. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay positive. It's only Knox Hill. You know, I'll catch you again. Hail Matic on my tape, but I bet they think it's shady. Just waiting for the day when everybody here will play me. Still dreaming, these fiends, they still scheming. Monday evening, feeling like a weekend. Where they sipping brown paper bags, little liquor, make it last. Take a taste of that, scraping ticket pass. They ain't paying cash, where they taking stands. So keep rolling, though the damage can feel hopeless.
helpless in the land of the broken world. 